What's going on, guys? I'm really excited about this video. Um, this is one of my favorite tools. It's called Tmux, the Terminal Multiplexer. Now, when I work on a shell, like on my own local machine, I like to use a lot of tabs because I'm a little bit ADD and I like to be thinking about and working on a whole bunch of different things at once. I know it's not efficient, but hey. Um, Tmux is a tool that basically lets you do that on remote machines as well. So you install Tmux, the Terminal Multiplexer, on a remote server and you're basically good to go. You can have like lots of different tabs or you can use a kind of like i3 and have lots of different panes in a single shell session. You can detach and reattach from sessions. So for example, if you run a long running command, just you log in to your laptop, SSH to some server, run a command. If that command takes, I don't know, four hours because it's a backup, you are screwed because you can't shut off your laptop and just go do something else. You have to keep that SSH session open because closing it will kill the backup process. So instead, Tmux allows you, because it runs on the server, it allows you to detach. So you could, so SSH in, start like start Tmux, start running the backup, detach from your Tmux session, close your SSH session and shut down your laptop, go somewhere else. SSH back into the server from somewhere else and then reattach to your Tmux session, and your long-running command, in this case the backup, will still be running. It's amazing. This is like revolutionary. You can sort of do this with SSH by messing around with the, the config file or changing some flags, but Tmux has a lot of features that you sort of can't get from SSH. Another really cool thing is sharing sessions. You can log into a machine, and if someone else is also logged into that machine, you can share a shell session. So you basically just does a socket file and both of you attach to the same Tmux session and you can basically type with each other or watch each other type. It's great for like pair programming if you're using a text-based editor like Vim, Emacs. It's amazing and there's a lot of tools that sort of do this in a more complicated way, but uh, there you go. It's a collaboration suite my marketing talk. There's another tool that does this. Historically, uh, the first tool to do this, I think, was GNU Screen. I don't know much about it. I've never used it. All the cool kids I know use Tmux, and because I'm a slave to trends and care only about the approval of others, I simply started using Tmux as well. The, just the admins that I have worked with tend towards Tmux, so that's the one I learned. I hear it's got features that Screen doesn't. I don't know if that's true, but I'm going to show you how to use Tmux. Okay, so there's a lot of tutorials online, but I figured this video will cover the basics and then the more advanced stuff, essentially just detaching and reattaching from remote sessions, uh, specifically sharing sessions, uh, I will show you in the next video. Okay, here we go. First, we are going to install Tmux on our remote server. So we're SSHing into our remote server, and then all you have to do is app get install tmux. I've already got it installed, so nothing's going to happen. Okay, so right now you're in a regular SSH shell session. We need to start tmux. This command, tmux, starts the tmux server. Control B is the prefix that you'll use to say, hey, this isn't going to be for the shell, this is going to be for tmux. So Control B and then some command means, uh, hey, Tmux, do this command. So, for example, control B C is create a new window. And let's do that right now. So, hit control B, and then C, and we suddenly have a new window. We'll call this window 1. You can see at the bottom, this is sort of updating. The star means I am in this window. We've got window 0, we've got window 1. So control B C creates a new window. Now, it's always just named bash right now because that's the shell I'm running in it. So we want to change that. The way we do that is by doing control B comma. So the comma sign and you see rename window. Uh, let's call this window one. Hit enter and you can see the name down here has changed. Window one is now named window one. That's the one we're on. If we want to switch which window we are looking at, control B, again, as a prefix to hey Tmux, do something. P for previous, 
or N for next. Obviously, with two windows, it's irrelevant. But once you've get more, you uh, cycle through in either direction. So previous and next, P, N. C is create window. W is list windows. So if we do control B, W is list the open windows. This gives you a scrollable, selectable list of stuff you can go into. So these are your open windows. If we want to go back, you can see that's our first window. Now if we go control B, W again, we can go to the second window. Control B, P for previous brings us back. Okay, so that's windows. There's another abstraction here. They're called panes. Now, panes are simply, you can split this. If you've watched my i3 videos or you use i3 as a window manager, uh, it's a tiling window manager, and the tiles here are called panes. You can split each window that you're in vertically or horizontally. So by default, I'm going to show you in the next video how to change some of these key bindings to be a little better, but by default, control B percent sign splits vertically, right? And it kind of makes sense. I mean, the percent sign is, it's like a little two things that are split uh, vertically, sort of 45 degree vertically, but hey. Uh, to split horizontally, I'm not sure if there's a better command by default for this, but control B colon. So colon basically gives you the ability to give named commands to tmux. So for example, to split horizontally, you just say split window. And that'll split the window that my cursor's in horizontally. So again, that's control B colon to say, hey, I'm gonna give you a named command. Because there's no key binding for a vertical split, you just say split window. And there you go, splits again. Now uh, shutting, one of these shell sessions, gets rid of that pane as well. So you can see we haven't created any new windows. In here, we still have access to these. But uh, we can still switch back and forth. And this has its own little panes now. So I'm going to close. I'm going to close these shells. You can see I just closed the last shell in a window, which means that window is closed now. If I do control B W, you can see the window's closed. I only have this one left. If I control if I close the last pane, the last shell, in the last window, Tmux will exit. And you can see here, I ran the Tmux command, did some stuff inside of Tmux, and then exited. So all these shells I started, that's inside of Tmux, the Tmux server running on this machine. Let's talk about sessions, because that's the feature that I use the most, and everything after that I'll cover in the next video. So sessions are the I think most powerful uh, intuitive feature of Tmux. To create a session, just do Tmux new session and then a name. So we'll call this backup shell or session is better. So Tmux create a new session it's called backup session. It's just like starting Tmux, but this is a named session here. And we can, let's do something long running. Oh my lord. Everything should have htop installed. I'm going to put that in my build config. So we've got htop running. And you can see htop just keeps pulling proc every, I don't know, a second or two. And if I want to get out of this or if I close the SSH session, it's just going to kill the htop process because that's running inside of this SSH session. However, if I do control B D to detach from the session. I'm back on the shell, but that HTOP process is still running. There it is. If I want to reattach to the session, I can do that now, but I want to show you if I log out of this SSH session, this would kill normally any process that I've started from the SSH session. So I've closed the connection. I'm back on the original machine. Now I'm going to SSH back in. Let's say I've shut down my client machine, I've gone home for the day, and now it's, you know, three in the morning, there's some problem on the server. I log back into the server, and then I do tmux list sessions. You can see 
I only have one session here, it's called Backup Session. I've got one window open, and this is when it was created. You can even see the dimensions of the session. So now I can just reattach to it. Tmux attach to Backup Session. It's still running, it's been running, and nothing has changed. So this has been running inside of Tmux on the server, as opposed to tied to the SSH session that's coming from my client. This is extremely useful. And when you combine this with tabbing, or I guess panes, or tiling, so control B, and then let's say percent, it's just, it's phenomenally useful. I'm going to post a cheat sheet for commands uh, at the bottom of this video. And you can take a look for yourself, play around with this. But basically, sessions are the really amazing feature that I cover in this video. And in the next video, we're going to talk about shared sessions. So multiple users logged into the same session for like pair programming or maybe like a senior sysadmin showing a junior sysadmin from a different country, something on that same machine. Okay, I hope that was useful. Give it a thumbs up if it was. Subscribe for more stuff like this. And I will see you in the next video. Happy hacking.